Hi everyone, this is Kenny Lee, and let's talk about elastic collisions. Now, when I think about elastic, I think about things bouncing back or uh, at least going back to their original shape. And so with an elastic collision, we have two objects collide, they bounce off each other without deforming, so they don't change shape. And so one of the best examples is pool balls. We have two pool balls coming in, they crash into each other, and then they bounce off. And so it's sort of like this. You got two pool balls, okay, or two cue balls in this case. They hit and they bounce off each other. Now we're only going to, and my desk is not level, we're only going to talk about head-on collisions or collisions where one object catches up to the other one. We're not going to worry about them going off at angles to each other. So they just hit and bounce off. One catches up to the other one, and there's a change in momentum of both these things. But how does that momentum change? Well, for elastic collisions, there is a generic equation that we can use. And it's this. The momentum of the first object plus the momentum of the second object, because momentum is conserved, the momentum before has to equal the momentum after equals the momentum after the collision. That's what that little prime means. That means after the collision. Plus the momentum of the second object after the collision. Now, in this equation, we're assuming that the mass of the object stays the same. The only thing that changes is the velocity of the two objects. Right? But those little primes mean that this is the after side. This is before side. So this is momentum before. equals the momentum after. And we're talking about the instant before the collision and the instant after. Not several seconds after, but just the moment right before the collision and the moment right after the collision is done. So let's take a look at a couple of these. So for this one, we've got a 6 kilogram object traveling to the right at 4 meters per second, collides with a 2 kilogram object traveling to the left at 3 meters per second. After the collision, there's always got to be a before and an after. After the collision, the 6 kilogram object is going to the right at, three, at, sorry, at 2 meters per second. What's the speed and direction of the 2 kilogram object after the collision? I always like to start off with a picture. It doesn't have to be a good one. I just use... Uh, rectangles and circles for all my objects no matter what they are but it helps me organize information so that's a six kilogram object traveling to the right at four meters per second there's my two kilogram object it's traveling to the left at three meters per second they crash into each other and then after the collision the six kilogram object is going to the right still at two meters per second and we're looking to see what happens to the two kilogram object we don't know what's happening to it now after i've got my equation i can just drop it into our generic momentum or elastic collision equation or i can do momentum before equals momentum after and you should get the same thing but let's go ahead for this first one and just use the generic elastic collision equation. The sound effect is the equal sign. V1 after plus M2 V2 after. Let's drop the numbers in. So that's 6 times 4 plus 2. Now here's where we got to wait. Remember momentum is a vector, so... If we say going to the right is positive, then anything going to the left is negative. And that's how we traditionally define it. Right's positive, left's negative, although you don't have to. So this would be negative 3 because it's going to the left equals 6. After the collision, it's going to the right, so it stays positive, plus 2 going at some velocity after the collision. So now we just start working the math. So 6 times 4 is 24. Minus, that's going to be 6, equals, that's going to be 12, plus 2v2 two two prime. Go ahead and add things together. So we've got this. So let's go ahead and break out the calculator so I do not mess up. 
24 minus 6, 18 equals 12 plus 2v2 two prime. Move the 12 over, so it's going to track 12 from both sides. So we get 6 equals 2v2 two two prime. So the velocity after the collision is going to be 3 meters per second. One of the things we're asked is what direction is it going? Well, since our answer came out to be positive, we know it's moving to the right because we said right's positive. If our answer came out to be negative, it would be traveling to the left. This one should be a perfectly elastic collision. And what that means is the kinetic energy of the two objects before, the total of them, the sum of that, will equal the sum of the kinetic energies after the collision. We're not going to do that calculation. We're just going to look at conservation momentum with this problem, but you can look at that later on and see that the total kinetic energy before the collision equals the total kinetic energy after a collision, and that is the definition of a perfectly elastic collision. We're just going to solve it like it's just any old collision. So we got a three kilogram object. Okay, here's my three kilogram object traveling at four meters per second. Didn't tell me a direction, so I'm going to choose right. Clouds with a one kilogram object traveling in the same direction at two meters per second, so they're both going to the right. They crash into each other. And then after the collision, the three kilogram object is still moving in its original direction, but now at three meters per second. So it lost some speed. And we want to know what happens to the one kilogram object. All right. Again, after we draw the situation, we can just drop numbers into our generic elastic collision equation. And see what we get. So we get 3 times 4 plus 1 times 2 equals 3 times 3 plus 1 times v2 prime. And we just work out the math here. So that's going to be 12 plus another 2 equals 9 plus, let's just call that v2 prime because the 1 really won't make a difference there. So 14 equals 9 plus v2 prime. Subtract 9 from both sides. And we get 5 meters per second is that. And so it's going to the right at 5 meters per second after the collision. And again, if you check the total kinetic energy before and the total kinetic energy after, they should equal the same number. 